Hello and welcome to my little bookish corner of the internet. My name is Harriet. Today I'll be talking through some more anticipated reads for the rest of 2022. I haven't done one of these videos in a little while, but I figured I've got some new books and I picked up some more books from home and some of them I am extra excited to get to. So I just want to share those with you and kind of talk through some new books that I've purchased as well. So let's just get into this. The first book that I want to talk about, I actually purchased the other day, and that is this beautiful Penguin Clothbound Classics edition of The Canterbury Tales by Geoffrey Chaucer. Now this is a classic that I haven't actually read since I was in school, and you know when you're in secondary school you don't really care about anything that is going on, at least I didn't. It wasn't cool to be educated when I was in school as much as I kind of wanted to, but I do remember actually really enjoying reading these tales, and I believe that they are written in verse as well. And we watched a couple of of adaptations that I remember being super strange. There was something to do with pear tree in the place of a man's testicles. That's all I remember. It was very weird. It was appropriate for secondary school. That sounds like it wasn't. But yeah, it was fine. I just remember it being very unusual. So I'm excited to start this. And like I say, I only bought it the other day. But because it isn't in verse, I feel like I'll be able to dip in and out of it. And there are different tales within this as well. So this was written in the 14th century, so around 1392. And I just think that that's absolutely crazy. I'm really into super old literature at the moment. I just find it absolutely fascinating that this is what people were writing and thinking back then. And it's such a long time ago as well, but it's still very accessible. I do think that this has been altered and changed so it is a little bit easier to understand for modern day. But such a gorgeous edition and I thought I would just treat myself with the new job and everything. I thought why not? So very excited to get to this super soon. But also a little bit nervous because I don't know how hard it is going to be to read. I really have not got a clue. But hopefully it will be okay. Hopefully we'll be fine. The next book I actually have on my Kindle and I purchased it a really long time ago. And it is a non-fiction by Noel Fitzpatrick, who is the super vet. And this one is Becoming the Super Vet, Listening to the Animals. Now, I really don't know what part of Noel's life this focuses on. I think it is literally just him and the start of his career and where it's taken him now. But I have seen the show, The Super Vet, and I think it is absolutely incredible what this person has done. Just mind-blowing, and I really can't wait to read about it. I can't really say too much about it because I don't know too much myself. But I do think it's going to be something that I'm really going to enjoy and something that I'm definitely interested in. As I've mentioned before, I really want to get into more non-fiction, so this can be one of those books that I read. I just need to remember to pick up my Kindle because at the moment I just keep forgetting. I've got so many beautiful, gorgeous physical books that I just kind of forget about my Kindle. I've also lost my charger, so I do need to buy a new one. But once I get all of that sorted, I will be able to get into this and also into the next one, which is also on my Kindle, and that is The Sword of Kagan by M. L. Wang. I can't remember who told me about this book, but it has been recommended a couple times since that event. I'm really sorry if you were the one that recommended it to me, I really cannot remember for the life of me. But this is a fantasy martial arts blend of a story that incorporates elemental magic, so people have said it's quite similar to Avatar The Last Airbender, which is a show that I watched during lockdown for the first time and I absolutely adored it, I just thought it was wonderful. This seems to be a coming of age story as well and I've just seen so many standout reviews for this book, so I do have very very high expectations which is why it's so anticipated, but again it is on my Kindle and I just keep forgetting that it's on there so I really need to make myself pick it up because I really feel like I'm going to enjoy it. I don't know too much more than what I've told you there, so I'm very sorry, but I didn't want to spoil it for myself by looking up synopses or anything like that. So yeah, just another fantasy book that I'm very excited to start soon. Speaking of fantasy epics, I also cannot wait to get to The Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. This is a huge book, it is massive. This edition is 804 pages long, not including the little bit at the back that tells you about the different people in the story. So I feel like there's gonna be a lot of characters just based off the fact that it has that in here. This has been described as like a feminist Lord of the Rings. I don't know how similar it is to that series. I don't know if it's just because it's a big fantasy book. Not certain, but I've had amazing, amazing things. The cover is beautiful and I've just been thinking about reading it ever since I bought it, which was not that long ago to be honest. So I do think I need to pick this up super soon. It might be something nice to read towards the autumn time, just because fancy makes me feel really cosy and lovely and warm and I just want to wrap up with a hot drink and read a big book like this, really sink my teeth into it. But it seems like it's going to be a very fun read and if there's dragons in it then I'm sure to like it. I've got two books that I don't actually currently have with me but I do have physical editions of. They are at my house so I will be picking them up super soon. So we've got Dante's Inferno which was first published in the 15th century. So in 1472, and supposedly 14 of those 300 copies that were printed back then are still 
about they're still around which i just think is absolutely crazy that a book is that old and is still in existence you think it would just turn to dust or something <laughs> but i guess it's protected so i just thought that was really cool i only just found that out it's very interesting but all i know about this and it's a very very short synopsis is that it is a poet's journey into hell that is all i know but again it is written in verse so it's the next book that i'm looking forward to which is paradise lost by john milton and this is a 17th century epic poem this is a lot longer than dante's inferno so i feel like i'll probably read inferno first and then go on to paradise lost but again this is kind of like a religious text it is telling the biblical tale of the fall of mankind surrounding adam and eve and the serpent and god so something very different for me i don't really read a lot of biblical texts but I am trying to educate myself and I do think this is really nice to do it without just reading the Bible. So they're two books that I'm super excited to get to and I got both those for my birthday. So it's been a couple of months since I got them, but I'm already ready to pick them up along with another book that I also got for my birthday from the same person. So thank you, Callum, for all the lovely books. And that is Norse Mythology by Neil Gaiman. I'm just really trying to read all of the old good stuff and find out all these amazing myths and legends that I know absolutely nothing about because they don't teach you it in school. Or maybe it's the fact that I didn't listen in school. We won't blame the teachers or the education system. But yeah, this is a super short read, like really, really quite short. And I do think that it's going to be very inspiring and interesting to read. And I really like the way that Neil Gaiman writes as well. His writing is always very transportive and magical. So I do have high hopes for this, but I think it is more on the nonfiction side of things. I'm not certain. I don't know if it's completely set to what the myths were or if he's had his own take on it. I really don't know. Um, so if you do know, do let me know down below. And then the final two books I actually only just purchased off of Amazon. They were on sale, else I probably would have got them from Waterstones or Blackwells, but sometimes Amazon really does get me with their deals. These were £3 each, so I couldn't say no. And they are both published through Disney. So we have got Rebel Rose and Feather and Flame, and these are the two books that are currently available in the Queen's Council series. I don't know how many books are going to be in this series, but I do know there is a third one planned, I believe, for Jasmine. So at the moment we have got Belle and then we've got Mulan's story. And I think these are YA, I'm not completely certain, but it's basically following them after the events that we all know and love from the films and taking a darker spin on it and what happens to the kingdoms that these princesses have kind of been put in charge of. And I just think it's really interesting. So very excited to start these and I do think both of the front covers are gorgeous, but I do prefer this one. I do think it just looks really lovely. So hopefully I will enjoy these since I did buy both of them without even trying it to see if I like them but they are so gorgeous and I'm really happy to have them on my shelves. So yeah, quite a long list of books that I'm excited for for the rest of the year, but I am hoping to still read 100 books. So there's plenty of time to get through those. I think I'm nearing the 60 book mark now, which is really exciting. So we are almost there. Please let me know if there are any books that you are super excited to read before the year is up. But that is everything for me today. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye.